everybody, and uh, no, you've not gone mad. You did read the title of this video right. I am going to do a video all about my photography office, and I appreciate that. It's potentially a bit of a dull topic, but for me, this room is, uh, well, it's incredibly exciting. Now, to give you some context as to why it's exciting, particularly if you're a new viewer to this channel, uh, before I lived here in this house, I lived in an apartment in the middle of Manchester, which, uh, I mean, I've not lived a hard life. I've always had a roof over my head. Uh, I've always had food on the table. And that was a very nice apartment to live in. To make videos in, it probably couldn't have been much worse. So what was wrong with it? There was a skyscraper being built pretty much next door. And the other problem with it being made pretty much entirely from glass is that it was very echoey. Very echoey. Anyway, uh, my desk. This is, this is my desk and there's not a whole lot to say about it. It's from Ikea. It has some drawers and it has a little cupboard here where I can store away all my paperwork that I don't really want to deal with. Uh, on this desk, conventionally, I have a computer, a laptop, a 15-inch MacBook Pro, which is approaching its fourth birthday and I'm hoping it doesn't break anytime soon because I hate buying new computers and going through the process of transferring loads of stuff and they're really expensive. So uh, if I can help it, I prefer not to spend money on a computer and instead spend money on things like flights. Um, I have that hooked up to a Dell monitor, which I've had for a couple of years as well. This is a really bog standard monitor. I don't really see why I need anything else. I get asked a lot if I calibrate my monitors and the answer to that is I used to, uh, and then it broke, my calibrator broke. I didn't bother replacing it and there have been no consequences since. All my prints are fine, I've never had a client complain. So until one of those things breaks, um, then I probably won't invest in a calibrator because I'd prefer to spend my time um, doing other things than calibrating my monitors if I don't actually have to. Um, I also have some hard drives scattered around my desk as you might expect. I've got some speakers, um, I've got a mouse and a keyboard, saying entirely obvious stuff. I have a notepad, I have a candle which smells of nice things, and a pen and pencil holder to hold my things which I use to, to write with. Also, this light bulb is, uh, is something else. So. Here's my nice yellow light, except, oh, Ooh. yes, look at all the options, it's fun for hours. Yeah, so this light was probably the best eight pounds I've ever spent from Amazon. It was uh, from a company that I don't know the name of, and uh, I bought a few of them, basically you can just change the, the light colour in the bulb, which I think is it's quite a nice touch. I also have a Blue Yeti microphone here, which I need to get a pop filter for. I wasn't aware of the, the phenomenon of pops when you say a, a word beginning with P. But yeah, I need to get a pop filter for that. But that's working quite well for my voiceovers, which I'm, I'm not doing a great job of so far. But I'm getting to grips with it, and I think voiceovers could be a real help for the kind of videos that I want to make this year. So, so that's good. Um, that pretty much sums up the desk. Uh, my shelves haven't fallen down yet. You'll be familiar with these shelves if you watched a video that I made a couple of weeks ago on uh, investments to make in photography. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not entirely confident that they're going to stay up. They're floating shelves and I put them there. So chances are at some point they will crumble. Hence why I only have one book, a succulent, and a photo of Emily that I took in Australia a couple of months back. And that's pretty much the only weight that I want to put on that shelf. I'm not too confident about any more weight than that. On the shelf above that, I just have some more succulents, which honestly weigh absolutely nothing. Uh, above my desk, I have a map of the world. This is a map that was $2.99 and is actually wrapping paper, I think. And uh, I really like it. It's got like all the shipping lanes and stuff and I can use it to to get some inspiration on where to go for, for future trips. And uh, I'm planning some trips at the moment to take place over the next two or three months. And uh, yeah, that map wasn't useful for any of those. Uh, above that map, there are two nails, which you can't see, but I will show you. And those nails have absolutely nothing attached to them. The point of those is, well, I'll show you in a minute. Basically, uh, in the first video that I did, in this room, that investments one that I was talking about, uh, you might have noticed that there was quite a lot of echo. 
there might still be some echo because I've not fully solved it yet. Basically, a lot of you suggested that I should get those those foam squares that you can put on walls to, to soundproof rooms. The trouble with that is that this is quite a small house and this room that I'm in, while its main kind of primary job is to help me make videos and to, to work in, it will need to be used on occasion as like a, a bit of a bedroom. Uh, with an airbed in it and stuff. So I need something a little bit less permanent and drastic than those foam things, because it still needs to look like a nice room from time to time. So um, what I've done is I've bought a blanket, which I'll show you now. Yeah, so what I've done is I've bought a blanket, which it doesn't look like you can see at all. Uh, but basically, I've just put nails on each of the walls and then when I need to, when I'm talking to that wall or in the direction of that wall, I can just put a blanket up and hopefully that deadens some of the echo. I don't really know if it's working, this is the first video I've done since trying that. Uh, but behind this blanket, if I take it down, uh, I need to be quite careful because behind it is... A little gallery. Gallery's a bit of a stretch. I mean, it's three of my photos. And I've always sat on the fence with, uh, with showing your own work in your own house. It looks a bit kind of self, um, what's the word? Looks like you're a bit full of yourself, to be honest. But um, I just love those photos, so screw it. Also, I imagine they'll change with time. You know, once I take other photos that I really like, I'll, I'll put those there, but I think that looks quite nice. But yeah, blanket hung up with nails is my um, is my first attempt at deadening echo. I might need to get a couple more of these. Uh, welcome to the print station. So this is basically an Ikea tabletop, which was about £10, sat on some Ikea, uh, what are these called? Drawers, which were about £40, and then some legs, some Ikea legs, which were about £10 each. It's strong enough, though, to hold my Canon Pro 10S, all 30-odd kilos of it which is a relief. I've also got a desktop printer up here, pretty much the cheapest one money can buy to do all my invoices and stuff like that. And I have a third printer, which is a label printer. An essential piece of kit if you do any postage and have handwriting like me. Um, I also have another holder of pens and pencils, which is not interesting at all. And another light, which is because, ta-da! 16 pounds I've spent on these lights and they've turned this into an absolute man cave. I mean, I say man cave, some of my favorite colors are quite feminine. Um, so yeah, these drawers have got all my bits and pieces for printing, so paper, ink, packaging, tape, all that kind of stuff, so that's pretty useful. Uh, I put that shelf up yesterday expertly and that's gonna be where a lot of my books live. Not many books up there at the minute, that's because we still haven't properly unpacked this house, but yeah, lots of books will live up there. Uh, there are a few at the minute, basically you might recognize those if again you watched the last video I did in here, Photography Investments. I held aloft two books in that video, a North Wales one and a Peak District one by a company called PhotoView and the next day after I uploaded that video they sent me the whole range, which is awesome. So guys, thank you very much. Um, that's pretty much a wrap for the print corner. Down here where I'm sat there's a bit of an area for, for charging but to be honest that's an absolute disgrace at the moment. I do want to turn that into a bit of a charging haven whereby there is a, a socket for every single thing that I need to charge but that's going to need the handiwork of an electrician and uh, I haven't got that far yet. And heaven forbid I go anywhere near wiring. This back wall behind me and the printing station at the moment, I'm going to keep that completely clear. And the reason for that is that it means I can use longer focal lengths when I'm doing to camera pieces like this. I'm currently not using a long focal length at all, but it means I can and I can have no distractions behind me, which hopefully will make some of the things I'm talking about a bit easier to follow because there won't be loads of stuff going on in the background. And uh, ultimately just means that you can spend more time looking at my my pretty face. Two things to show you down here, neither of which you'll be able to see because of the horrific lighting I've chosen, but never mind, I'll, I'll find a way to show you. Uh, the first is my photography bag, which is just perched up against the printing station. It's a lot of fun calling it a printing station. It's, it's over the top, but I like it. Um, yeah, this bag is basically in a state of always been packed wherever possible. Um, I did toy with the idea of having shelves with all my gear on it, but then I came to realize that the vast majority of the time I'm using my cameras and equipment, 
I'm outdoors and therefore I might as well always try and keep my bag packed so that I can get out the door sooner, which is one of the things I really struggle with, particularly early in the mornings. So yeah, to save the hassle of having to pack and unpack my bag all the time, I just decided to always try and keep it in a state of being packed so that I could, uh, I could get out the door quicker. The second thing I wanna show you down here, which is probably the thing I'm most proud of in this room, aside from the lights, is this bin, this IKEA bin, which I'm using to store the tripods that don't get much use. And uh, I like that for two reasons. Number one, it's clean and it works. But number two, and more importantly, is if you follow this channel for a while, you'll know that I hate tripods. And therefore the fact that some of mine live in a bin is really quite apt and uh, neat. Yeah, I like that. And last but not least, my, uh, 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 oh, the echo's back. I've taken the, the blanket down just for this shot, really, because I, I thought it looked nice that you could see a bit of the, the frame. I'll put it back up. A little bit better. There's definitely still an echo, but I'm working on it. Uh, right, cupboard. Now, someone pointed out in the last video I did that it was odd that this is like a proper door. Like, there's a handle on this side. Why would you need a handle on this side? I'm not planning on spending much time in here, but begs the question, what did the previous owner do with this cupboard? But never mind. So in here, to be honest, it needs some TLC. It needs some work, but I can talk you through the premise. Basically, this is gonna store all of the stuff that can't fit in my bag. So I've got like a little shelf for excess sound stuff, uh, a little shelf for excess lighting stuff, some room for cables, some room for old boxes, some room for more lighting stuff down the side, bags, which I've already talked about in that other video that I keep referencing. Uh, so yeah, this is just storage, and as I say, it needs some needs some love and, and some thought, but, but yeah, this is where all the, the extra stuff is gonna live. Never had one of these before, it's, it's all quite exciting. There's really not a whole lot to say about it other than, than that. So, that's the office. Uh, there's some more soundproofing to do, as you can probably hear, but largely, this is uh, the finished product, and this is the room that I'm gonna be using to do my, my indoor videos and uh, photo editing and stuff for the foreseeable future. And I'll reference that previous video again once more. As I said in this video, I really need to thank you for watching my videos, because I, I wouldn't have this room if it wasn't for you watching videos. There's no way I'd have been able to convince Emily that I needed a room. So uh, yeah, I'm very grateful for the fact that I have this, and uh, it's pretty much down to you, so thank you. I did say the final thing when I opened that cupboard. I'm gonna quickly reference this light. Right, lastly, before I let you go, you might have noticed this light paper bulb thing uh, in the video. I got this from, well, guess where I got this from? And I got it because I'd seen uh, other YouTubers using them for sort of soft uh, light when they're filming videos. And it works great, I mean, it needs a, a brighter daylight bulb. But I've been very happy with it considering it cost nine quid or something. There's one problem which I didn't foresee, and that's this. Kind of constricts its use. I, I mean, I have to basically treat this room like a roundabout, which isn't ideal. But uh, aside from that, it's brilliant. Thanks for watching.